You know, the 1920s were such a simpler time. The music was better, I could be overtly racist, and you didn't have to worry about drinking. Well, you two are here, yeah. Daniel and Jill. This is completely not planned. No, this, this isn't planned. What are you doing here? Recording. So we just finished eating at Prohibition Free House. Not I almost forgot the house. name. Not Firehouse. They will put you in the wrong spot here in Calgary. Uh, so Daniel and Jill, what were your initial thoughts on the restaurant? It was loud. It was loud. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think we were. Thanks, sitting, old man. <laughs> I think we were sitting right under a speaker, though. I think we, we were. Didn't have that going if it wasn't, for us. if it wasn't for the loudness, it would have like it was great. Like the food was great. It's just it was, it was too loud. <laughs> the food was delicious. I had the poutine, which was the hand cut fries with I think mushroom gravy sauce, and then little pork balls, and then the cheese curds, and it was delicious. It was so good. I had the free, no, not the free balls. I had the naked balls. <laughs> Big difference The naked there. free balls. The naked free balls. Uh, they were lovely. It, I, I didn't want to have too heavy of a dinner, so I got to pick the kind of the meat of the ball. <laughs> Don't, it, it's not funny, Dan. It's very serious business. The meat the and the, the sauce. And, and the then, texture. And the texture and all that kind of stuff. I, it, was, it was really good. You can, if you're a vegetarian, there's, there's some options there for you. You can pick from like tomato sauce or pesto sauce or cream sauce. So I think that they do a really great presentation. How about oh, you, Daniel? Yeah. What did you have? I had the uh, chicken and apple with the mashed the potatoes. The free option. Well, the chicken. I like chicken, so <laughs> it's not... Uh, yeah. But, and with mashed potato base with mushroom sauce, it was really good. I mean, the only thing I guess as, as far as the criticism goes for the entire experience, because I thought the food was excellent, uh, when I got there, so, uh, sometimes throughout the night, I thought the service was a little bit slow for, yeah. for my taste. And it's not that it was super busy in there, I didn't yeah. think, either. So, But my like, drink service was great. Yeah, for, for apparently if you order a Coke to drink, you're going to get that refilled as soon as you're done with it. Or even before. Like, I think yeah. I had a couple more sips left and I already had another yeah. one. And it was the best $2.50 I ever, ever spent <laughs> There on you go. Meanwhile, waiting to pay took like five hours. So. Yeah, and we ended up figuring out the system. <laughs> yeah, that's ourselves. right. We figured out the code to go in and we just like paid ourselves and then we uh, were like, yeah, left. here, we did that's this. That's not sketchy at all. Well, no, no, we didn't I give ourselves refunds, I promise. <laughs> that's right. I was worried that I was like, I didn't want to just leave and be like, yeah, we figured it out. Be like, here, we figured it out. If you want to verify, you can verify. Go ahead. Real quick, I shouldn't say real quick. Real you, slow. You both, you, yeah, real slow. Let's go glide into there like a like a free ball. Uh, <laughs> what uh, you do a podcast together? You yes. Do. Yes. It is called Mouthy and Curious. Yeah. Well, how did you come up with that? That's how you mispronounce my last name, Mouthy. Yeah. And my favorite question is why, and I'm curious. So nice. Thanks. It's a play on my last name. That's true. That's so, right. So what do you talk about? Everything, but <laughs> mostly Everything. like mostly kind of caters around movies and like yeah. TV shows and media content. Got but it. like. I think we have an upcoming episode about cats, so... Yeah, yeah and we just talked about my engagement, so... Right. That oh, was completely so not movie related at all. Not just your engagement, but yeah, it was your, your whole engagement. trip <laughs> yeah. to Jamaica. It's yeah. called Pop Moms Getting Hitch, so... Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's Fair. cool. And you both also have YouTube channels, correct? That is correct. Why don't you mention them? And they might even appear somewhere on the screen. With the fancy card system? Probably not. I, oh. do, I don't know how YouTube works. Oh, okay. <laughs> Annota an annotate it. <laughs> sure. Annotate it. Annotate it. What's your, what's your channel name? The DXT. Cool. On all the social media. And Jack? JC Mouthy. That's M A U T H E. Cool. Go check them out. And if you have time here in Calgary, I would definitely come down to Prohibition Free House. For sure. It was good. Yeah, it was really good. The food is amazing. I loved video games as a kid. I was a Sega guy, played Sonic all the time, got my N64 and fell in love with Zelda and the Ocarina of Time, which is still my favorite video game ever and in this world where I just do so many other things it seems like games have fallen by the wayside and the only thing I really have on me is my iPhone and so I occasionally play like little puzzle games like Tetris and that sort of thing but I haven't really gotten into heavy gaming in a while now a few things here that I just need to say up front I'm gonna be discussing Monument Valley 2 and a I got this game for free because of my employer and number two never played Monument Valley number one. So keep that in mind as I kind of keep discussing this. This, I have to say, it's just a phenomenal game. I think that those apps and, and games that really utilize the 
the phone, the smartphone, and unique ways are the things that I really gravitate towards the most. And Monument Valley is this puzzle game where you have, or at least in Monument Valley 2 is this game where you're trying to guide a mother and her daughter through these intricate puzzles where you either have to twist things around or it's kind of like those M.C. Escher paintings where you have to like maneuver things that really don't work in a 3D space, but because it's a 2D space, you can kind of force things to to be weird and wonky like that. I think it's a beautiful game. It sounds amazing. It's something that you really should be using headphones on predominantly. And it's just this really relaxing Zen thing that I can kind of get into while telling this really beautiful story of, of loss. I have not finished the game here as of yet, but it really feels like what you're doing is navigating a story between a mother and a daughter and understanding that sometimes you have to grow apart to become even closer together as a family. Or maybe I'm just an English major really trying desperately to find themes and things that don't have themes. But if you've played Monument Valley, let me know down in the comments because I'd really like to hear your, your thoughts and feelings. And until like next week, um, I don't know, try not to drain your battery. <laughs>